scare you, Bunny. I'm so sorry. Come back. see birds? I'll put out some bird seed for you. Okay? Hello, here I am. It's Rachel of Rachel Gets Creative. Welcome to my channel. And let's get back to Sally. So I painted her scars and I think they look pretty good. Let me bring her over here a second. What is left for me to do on her is some graveyard stones here, some pumpkins here, all Nightmare Before Christmas style her eyelashes, of course, a spool of uh, needle and thread here. And then I'm gonna have some uh, hair flying off this direction to keep things balanced. So that's not a lot and is a lot. <laughs> I think I'm gonna work on that and try to finish her off as my first painting of 24 paintings in 2024. So yeah, I need to get to it. Also, the yellow moon is a little too bright yellow. If you look at the movie, it's, it's more muted than that. I'm back with another thought. So there's actually two different color palettes for uh, Nightmare Before Christmas. There's the movie color palette where everything is dulled down. You would never see this pink. You would never see, you would hardly see the red of her hair this red. You wouldn't see the moon that bright. And then there is the marketing where everything's brightened up, you know, the Disney figurines and backpacks and t-shirts and things like that. So I think I'm kind of going uh, a little brighter. I think I'm going the marketing route. Yeah, oh, and a little Jack charm, just a second. A little Jack charm hanging from her pink ribbon, his face. So, uh, cause they're so wee hearts, they are. Now and forever. What is it? We'll sit together now and forever. Something like that.
no, 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 Marnie. That's a family saying. So there's a lot of busyness going on here. I've added the hair, her eyes are different. She's got gravestones, a moon, pumpkins, needle and thread. It was just getting a little too busy. So at first I thought, okay, maybe I don't need the Jack charm here. Um, maybe I could put his face in the pumpkin. That would be kind of cool. But now the pumpkins look too big. So I'm trying to figure it out. Now I know this has got Marie Antoinette vibes and that means excess. That means all the things in your hair, a ship, flowers, but it's still my painting and I still need to edit it. So I'm going to think about that. Yeah, I may need to erase those pumpkins. That might be tricky. Nope. Those pumpkins, they just wiped right off with a paper towel. That is the good thing about oils is it takes a long time to dry. So you can correct mistakes like that. So yeah, we're going to redo those pumpkins. We're going to redo some pumpkins. Peekaboo. I have all this. Ah, la, la. I have also decided I am going to keep. She can't see her the glare i am going to keep the jack charm right there keep it simple i wiped off the uh the hair it's going behind her neck now and i think if i plan the pumpkins a little more carefully that um she will look balanced and good I went online to find out how to mix a good vivid orange and I found out that cadmium yellow and cadmium red are the way to go and that is true. So um, I had much more success painting the pumpkins third times the charm with this mixture and also they are both opaque colors so they have good coverage whereas I think I was trying uh, with maybe more transparent paints before. Done enough. Every now and then you're working on a painting and it's time to move on because you're done enough. Every now and then you've got to quit and tell perfectionism. Go kiss your own butt and move on. Done enough. This painting is done enough. Okay, this is the part where I say this is painting one of 24. 
in 2024, woo! And it's January 31st, which means I'm a little bit behind the curve, but that's okay. And so, and I'm also, if you just wanted to see the reveal and move on, I love you. I love you very much. Bye-bye, have a good day. Uh, but I am going to sit and evaluate this for my own um, record. What I like, what I don't like, etc. I got my notes here. What I like, I like her entire face. I love her David Bowie eyes. And when I painted the eyelashes last night, it just brought it all together. Her little, she did them with thread, her own eyelashes, because of course, Dr. What's his name? Wouldn't think to give her pretty eyelashes. And so that just, I'm glad that came off without a mistake. I think it brought in some of Sally's sweetness and vulnerability. Um, I love her swirly hair. I love the pumpkins. Finally, I had to erase, like wipe the oil paint back twice on those pumpkins. And then they turned out great once I figured out which oranges I needed to be making. And the gravestones, they, they came off easy peasy. Love them. What could be better? The things that I did toward the end that felt rushed, the Jack charm, uh, the hair tendrils, the needle and thread. I probably could have thought more about how I did the thread. I wished I'd maybe given her a bit more of a smile, which would have involved making her scars have more of an angle, but I did not do that. And speaking of scars and stitches, I think the stitches on her face, if I really, if I really am honest, the cat won't shut up outside. You've got to make up your mind, in or out, okay? The stitches on her face kind of look like stitches on an American football. And then the dresses, sorry, the stitches on her dress are way too tiny. Um, but I'm going to say done enough. That's fine. So what I have learned, I've learned I'm going to let the cat in, even though he's just going to want to go right back out. Uh, one thing I did right in this painting was evaluate and look at it and edit as I went. For example, taking off those pumpkins twice, taking off the gravestones once or twice, just the outline. Uh, I think I did it with the hair tendrils. The good thing about slow drying oils is you can just wipe them clean um, if they're wet enough with a paper towel, uh, as long as what's underneath is dry. That, that is uh, important, otherwise you smear things and it's bad and I've done that too. So yeah, I think I made some good choices in this. Uh, one thing that helps in making good choices, oddly enough, if you take a picture and look at it versus looking at the actual painting, it's like your eyes are more subjective. You see things you don't see uh, in the actual painting, in the photo, and it helps you make decisions. So I did that. And just some, uh, for example, Zero's gravestone. Normally it would have little crossed bones under his carved head and the word zero on top. This last tombstone had a cross in it. It was just too tiny of details and I wasn't gonna do him justice. And I think simplifying it was a better choice. Also not adding jack-o'-lantern faces to the pumpkins. Uh, that is a choice, so. Yeah, I think uh, evaluate and edit. And then as always, <laughs> I have to work on my magical mythical light source. So oh, oh, it's coming from everywhere here and a lot of it doesn't match. But um, for example, is light coming from her cheek onto the spool of thread the way I've lit it? Uh, there is no reflection of the yellow moon on, now there is some on the pumpkins, but there's none on the gravestones. And there's other things, the way her hair's lit. I just did it because I like it, you know. And I'm not saying my work is ever going to be totally realistic. But when I composite things like this, when I bring in all these elements together and make something new, the face, the pumpkins, the gravestone, um, I need to think about, if I don't have a direct reference, I need to think where is the light coming from? What makes sense? Because it does, I think it does help it. It helps make it look right. Boop, boop, boop. AI images. Everyone wants to talk about AI, our robot overlords, um, might help with this. I 
an artist I follow, Leoba, Leoba Bruckner, I hope I'm saying that right. She uses AI images as references. Um, and uh, the results are beautiful. So there's a lot of controversy surrounding our robot overlords, um, but that is a tool I might be able to use to work on my lighting source. Um, and just until I learn it, you know, it's, I think it's just a skill like, okay, here we go. It should be lit here uh -uh, and I gotta go on and on. You, you know the point. Continue working on my contrasts. Um, so these gravestones again, they're light next to dark and it looks great. That light right next to the dark. And I think that is uh, a cool tool, a cool tool to have in my toolbox. What else? Okay, so there's this sort of, by definition, she is a Frankenstein's creature. Uh, there is a mis mismatched, imperfect quality to Sally's face. I mean, the real Sally, uh, if you look at her, she, uh, her, her lips are even more offset than I've done here. I've done a little subtly. She, she just, she's a, she's a rag doll. She's been put together. She's been stitched together. That was really fun to create. And I think it gave me some freedom to, um, make different choices. I'm rambling. Okay. What I'm trying to say is, okay. So my golden woman from Jabara that I painted last year, here she is. If you look at her face, her eyes, now she also had a, a strange, imperfect, unusual face and it was wonderful to paint, to put these colors I wouldn't normally think about together to, to make the eyes sort of a, a mess, you know, but a mess that works. And I think that result is more interesting than sort of the smooth, polished, lacquery looking uh, things that I've attempted to paint in the past. I think it's a more interesting face, more painterly. I just want to remember this. I want to, I, I want to work on that. I think that could be interesting to bring into all the faces that I paint. And I thought there was more, but this is what I've written down. And this video is probably a hundred years long. So thank you for sticking to the end. If you're here, I wish I could give you a prize. Um, it would just be a virtual prize. Virtual cookies aren't real cookies. They just make you want real cookies. So I'll say again, I love you. Thank you for being here. And I got to figure out what to paint next because it's not going to be a big boy girl like this. It's probably going to be that 11 14. Is that 11 by 14? Yeah, that I'm staring at over there. Uh, take care and I will see you next time. Bye bye. Oh boy. They know you got food. You got food? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're slipping.